Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Delaware Student Success uh, College Application Month webinar. We are talking to Goldie Beacom College today. Um, my name is Karen Keegan from the Department of Education, and I want to welcome you here. Um, it'll be exciting and fun to hear um, from students from Goldie Beacom College, as well as from Brittany Hobbs, who's on the admissions team at the college. Um, first, I want to share some information. Um, I also want to thank um, Kelly Sheritz from University of Delaware's Institute for Public Administration, who is helping us to run this webinar. She and her team partner with us on College Application Month. So um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so this is the first in our series of uh, webinars from our Delaware colleges and universities. So today is Goldie Beacom. Um, tomorrow we'll be hearing from Delaware State University and then next week Wilmington University, Delaware Tech, then Delaware College of Art and Design and the University of Delaware. And what we've asked our colleges to do this fall is to do a very, very brief admissions overview. Um, and then you'll hear from students from each of these uh, colleges and universities so that we can hear what their student experience has been. I think it's really powerful for high school students and families to hear from students who are actually attending these schools. Um, you are free to ask questions in the chat if you would like. Um, we have some questions we're gonna ask them first, but then please feel free to put your questions in the chat and they will, and they will answer them. And these, web, this, these webinars will be recorded and will be posted on the DelawareStudentSuccess.org website uh, within a few days afterwards. So if you wanna tell your friends about them, that would be great. Um, we at the Department of Education have a texting program for high school students. Parents and caregivers are also well welcome to participate. Um, if you want to receive uh, one to two texts per week, we uh, will text you with information related to things you should be thinking about and doing, whether around college or apprenticeships or military or certifications all types of things that you can think about for what you want to do after high school. So if you would like to join, you can text the word success to 302-492-2092. And it will ask for your first name, then your last name, your school, and your year of graduation. And that way we can get information to you that applies to uh, you know, what grade you are in school. So feel free to, to do that. You can also text us anytime with questions that you have, and we, we will answer your questions via text. So feel free to use that as a resource. So I am going to turn it over to Brittany Hobbs from Goldie Beacom, and she's going to talk about um, admissions. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Brittany Hobbs and I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Goldie Beacon College. Um, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do a quick overview like uh, Karen mentioned and then we'll get to um, the students. So we are located in Pike Creek, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Um, we have uh, about 1,500 students enrolled from over 22 states and 60 nations. This, these are some quick um, facts about the school. Uh, we have a, we're, we're a small school, so we have a um, 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, so all your class sizes will be small. We have 25 different degree options. Over half of our freshmen um, live on campus. Students, um, all, any year can have a car on campus. So as a freshman, you're able to bring your car on campus and it's always free. Um, we never have classes on um, Fridays. So you always have a three-day weekend. So, and then we have 13 division two um, athletic teams. This is a list of all of our degree options. We used to be an all business college, so we do have a strong background in business. 
within our business um, administration degree, we have a bunch of different concentrations. We also offer psychology, English, criminal justice, human services, accounting, um, and communication and media. This is a little bit of information about our athletic programs. Like I mentioned, we are division two, so we can offer athletic scholarships. All of the coaches do the um, recruiting for athletics, but if you're interested in any of our sports, there's an athletic form on our website for you to fill out, or you can reach out to any of the coaches, um, you know, for more information. This is kind of an overview of the campus. All of the classes are in the Fulmer Center is in the middle here. The Jones Center is where um, a lot of our athletic facilities are, um, our brand new event center, our library, our dining hall, and then we have five different residence halls on campus. This one is Franta Hall. This is the brand new residence hall that opened um, last fall, and it's where all freshmen live their first year. It is um, you know, single or double rooms and um, there's study lounges and lounges on each floor. This is a view of our brand new dining hall. So we just opened this last um, spring and it is, um, you can get it all you care to eat or grab and go, Starbucks coffee, brick oven pizza, all different options our application process. So we have a free online application. It's very easy to do. Um, you can apply at any time. We have rolling admissions. So um, you go to the website, you fill out the application. There's no essay, there's no letters of recommendation or anything like that required. You have your high school counselor submit your um, or contact your counselor to submit your transcripts. And then um, if you want to, you can submit SAT scores or ACT scores. We are test optional, so they are not required. But if you want to, you can submit those. If you're not gonna submit them, you just let us know. And then we'll let you know about acceptance and scholarship. And then uh, we also, I put the information on here about the FAFSA code. So you can start filling that out as soon as October. Um, you can send that into up to 10 different schools. Um, this fall, we actually cut our tuition in half. So our tuition this year started out at 12,750 for a full, um, for, the, for the year, which is the 30 credits. In addition to that, we also offer generous scholarships based on your high school GPA or SAT um, and a or SAT, ACT scores. We also, um, you also are eligible for these scholarships without submitting test scores. So even if you don't submit your test scores, you are still um, eligible for one of these scholarships if you fall into one of the GPA ranges. And those are from 3,000 to 6,000. We are hosting on-campus information sessions. So if you want to come visit campus um, and go for a tour, they're one Saturday a month. They're all listed out here. They're also listed on our website. You just go on there, fill out or register that, let us know you're coming. We'll give you a tour. You'll meet with an admissions rep and then um, have lunch in our dining hall. And then lastly, if you are interested and want to um, start filling out an inquiry form. You can just pull up your camera to this um, here and it, scan it. It'll bring you straight to our inquiry form. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and then I'm going to introduce the students that we have here tonight. Uh, we have uh, three students. We have Anthony, we have Gabriella, and Laura, and I'll let you guys um, introduce yourself can tell us about your um, your year, what year you are, your major, and any where you're from, and anything else you want to share, and then we'll, we'll get to some questions. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Dina. I'm a senior here at Quarter Beacon College. Um, my major is business administration with a concentration in sports management. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of this panel and get to, you know, share my experience with all of you guys. Hi, my name is Laura. I'm a junior here at Goldie Beacom. My major is business administration with a concentration in management. 
And I'm happy to be back because I did one last year. So just let me know if you have any questions. Hi, I'm Gabby. I am a senior in January and my major is business administration with a concentration in organizational psychology. And do you guys want to share where you're from? I'm from Malawi and that's in Southeast Africa. I'm from Wilmington, Delaware and I went to Cap Calloway School of the Arts for high school. I'm from Bear, Delaware, and I went to Upper Potomac High School. Thank you. All right, so I will ask the question and then whoever wants to just jump in and answer. Um, why did you choose Goldie Beacom College? Um, I chose Goldie, um, you know, one of the main reasons was because of the size. Um, if you are a small school student uh, and you like more one-on-one -on -one time with your professors, um, Goldie is really the place to go. Um, I think as soon as I took my first tour here um, and seeing the campus life before all the construction happened uh, and, and in seeing what it's grown into now, um, it's, you know, campus life hasn't really changed. It's still active. It's still um, you know, as a family vibe to it. Uh, and everyone was so welcoming when I came here. So definitely the small campus. Um, atmosphere and just the family environment was what dragged me towards Golden Beacon. I'd also add the price for me. Uh, I applied for a lot of Delaware schools and Goldie Beacon just ended up being the cheapest ones because of its scholarships and also just its tuition in general. So it just made it really an easy decision to go. Um, my initial reason was actually the location. Um, I like that it's not far from New York or DC and I have family in both states so I can visit them often. Thank you. Um, why did you choose your major and when do you need to choose a major as a student at Goldie Beacom? Um, so I, I originally, when I first applied for Goldie Beacom, I wanted to uh, be, be in a marketing management atmosphere. I wanted to be, um, you know, always always sticking with business, but um, I realized about halfway through my freshman year that marketing um, management and that course load, just seeing what I'd have to be taking in the future wasn't to uh, um, my liking. So I switched over to sports management. Um, you know, I've always been in sports or been around sports growing up. So sports management was definitely um, something that caught my attention when I was looking at a major change. Um, I personally don't think you have to come into um, like your freshman year here with uh, a major decided at all. Um, that's the point of college is to learn your likes and dislikes and, and improve on skills that, um, you know, you'll find your passions. in. so, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly when the cutoff date of like when you need to find your major, but um, you know, get involved early and you'll be able to find what you, um, you know, are passionate about. To add on to what Anthony was saying, um, a lot of your freshman classes are kind of generalized, but still semi-focused on your major. So even if you do decide to make a change in your major, you won't be far behind, which is a great thing as well, because a lot of your classes will transfer over or they'll still have some relationship as well. So I don't, just like Anthony, like, I don't think there's a cutoff point exactly, but the earlier, the better. And I chose management because I really wanted something that I could do with my life in business. Uh, I just felt like management was kind of the way to start into any career and just have a backing behind it. Like a business degree, for me at least, looks really stable. So having that underneath of me, I think would help me in the future. Um, I actually initially had my major to be psychology and then in my sophomore year I changed to business admin and I think you have to change before your junior year if I'm not mistaken um, yeah and you can see like the your advisor in the career um, office and they help you with all that kind of stuff. 
So was it hard for you to change your major? Or was it- no, I literally went to career services and I was like, I want to change my major to do business and psychology. And she was like, okay, this, this option. And then she literally changed me and all my classes were the same because I had changed before my junior year when you actually start taking classes for your degree. Thank you. I'd like to add on to that as well. Um, you know, our counselors are uh, fantastic mentors and I literally sent one email at one meeting and got everything changed and um, I had my schedule all ready for the entire year in, in terms of classes. Um, and that one meeting, all they did was just change my major and I kept my classes all the same. So it was definitely an easy transition. Thank you. Um, what, if, if you know, what resources are available for undecided students? So if you came in, I know you guys all, I think, came in with a major decided, but do you know if there are any um, resources available for students that are undecided about their major? I know that we have a great, like Gabby was talking about, like I know that we have a great career services office. We also have the great counselors like Anthony was talking about. Um, your advisor is really there to help you figure out where you need to be for yourself and for your own benefit. So even if you just go up to them and be like, yeah, I'm still undecided, but I really enjoyed these classes, both career services and your advisor should be able to help you out to maybe formulate a plan for a major, even if you aren't fully 100% knowing what you want to do yet. I think another great resource um, can be your professors. Uh, every professor that I've had the chance to interact with have been very helpful in um, guidance and anything, um, you know, whether it's related to your major or not. Um, you know, definitely like one of the first weeks of, you know, being a student here at Goldie take advantage of introducing yourself to professors and, um, you know, letting them know your passions and maybe you can um, create those relationships to eventually network yourself with them um, because they have plenty of connections all around. Thank you. Um, What's it like to be a first year student on campus? Is there an active social life and what do you do on the weekends or what do you like to do on weekends? Um, for me, my first year was kind of traumatic, actually. Um, just being so far away from home and my family, um, I did not enjoy it at all. And I felt for my first, like for the first six months, I felt so alone. But once you make friends and establish relationships, that really helps, like, just bring yourself together. So I'm an introvert, and I definitely recommend putting yourself out there as much as you can because you have to like if if you're not going to be an introvert if you're not going to be an extrovert then you're just going to be alone and I feel like in college is the time for you to like discover yourself find out who you are and definitely make make friends because they they help with the journey a lot um you know, my, my first year was, um, you know, I, I went into the expectation of not knowing what to expect. And, uh, you know, I had maybe three, three friends from my high school, from my graduating class that also decided to go to Goldie um, and only one of them deciding to live on campus. But that first, that first weekend, that welcome weekend, uh, the tradition of, you know, the, like the, the moving and then getting used to the environment of being on campus. And then, you know, the, the multitude of events that, that follow. Um, I met my best friends on the first day that I moved in and I'm still best friends with all of them. Um, and even being roommates with, with some of them uh, for a couple of years. You know, I, I think, you know, Gabby made a great point. It's just, just go out and, and make friends, you know, step out of your comfort zone because, um, you know, the social life, at, you know, as COVID is kind of winding down a little bit and limitations have become non-existent, you know, obviously we are very precautious because um, all three of us um, students are a part of the Res Life team, um, but the social life is coming back to campus and um, it's definitely wonderful to see everybody around and what the campus can now provide because of, um, 
you know, all the great renovations and, and additions to the campus life. So I had a bit of a different experience because I was a commuter my first year and it also got cut off by COVID at the end. So pretty strange, but we're going to do what we can with it. Um, I was very like non-attached to Goldie at first because I had no one coming from my high school. All of my friends went to like UD or big colleges like that. Um, so I was like all by myself here and figuring that out and just kind of getting my feet under me took a little bit, but going to classes and meeting people in your classes, that way you guys can study. It's like little things like that coming from the commuter perspective anyway. But now that I live on campus and I get to see everything going on around me, it's like we have a back to school barbecue next week. So it's just gonna be everyone hanging out on our quad with games and food and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's stuff all around you. And like Anthony said, like we're all part of Res Life. So we are in charge of planning those kind of programs to get people out of their dorm rooms and talking with the people on their floor and the people in their buildings. So I'd say that Goldie's really there to encourage conversation, encourage relationships as well. Um, since you guys are all part of the residence life, um, can you guys kind of, for anybody that may not know, it kind of explain what that is and how you got involved with that and then what types of things you do um, being an RA? Um, so Res Life is, um, you know, it's our office is uh, the student affairs office. That's also the way our campus is set up. Um, it's also connected with career services. Um, Res Life is pretty much just the, we call ourselves the, the campus protectors. Um, we, uh, I think we're, we have about 14 RAs, 13 RAs, something like that. Um, five area coordinators and then our director of resident and student life, uh, as well as a senior coordinator of residence life. Um, our job and, and what we do day in and day out um, is we, you know, try to build the community uh, especially after COVID, we're trying to rebuild the community. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to, um, you know, like Laura said, come up with, with programs each and every day to um, keep the uh, campus lively, keep students involved, um, you know, especially the, the, the first year students that don't want to um, leave their room because that's where they're comfort. Um, they, we want to, you know, push out these programs and these events for people to like we keep reiterating, step out of their comfort zone and go to something fun and get to meet people and get involved. Um, I would say I, I got involved with the Res Life because I um, played soccer in high school and then coming to um, school here, I decided to not continue competitive sports, but I wanted to be involved with um, some sort of club or some sort of some, some form of like team to um, say that I came to campus and came to the school for a purpose. Um, no, I mean, I just wanted to make a name for myself because um, coming from a big family that um, did a lot for Appaquinnah High School, um, you know, I wanted to be the first to, in my family to make a difference for the school that I went to. Um, and I decided, you know, I just saw a flyer um, that they, they, they said there was hiring RAs and information sessions were approaching. And I went to one and now three years later, three years in a row of being an RA, um, getting a promotion and starting my own organization with um, Bernadine Griffin, the uh, senior coordinator of ResLife. Um, I've really taken this, um, you know, being a part of this program and kind of flown with it because it's something that I care about and it's something that I wanted to do when I got here. So I, coming from a commuter, you're like, oh my gosh, how does she go from commuter to RA in one year? But I was working at Goldie as an intern for about 11, 12 months, and I helped admissions with info sessions as well. So I had to learn a lot about the campus in order to provide the best experience for those, and as well as like other private tours and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't really know that much about the student engagement here. You know, like I wasn't really a part of it. Like I would come to school, take my class and go home. Like that's what my life was for the first two years here. So getting to see that inside look when I was giving tours like that, I was like, oh man, like there's a lot of stuff that's going on that I don't know about. Seeing the flyers going up and all that kind of stuff. And 
my friends always call me like the mom of the group. So I was like, oh, might as well, you know, <laughs> like I'll just try out, see where it goes. And like Anthony was talking about like one information session and I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to be better at this than, you know, I just want to be there for the students as well. So I want to be the best RA that I can. Um, I joined Residence Life because I didn't feel like a part of the community at all. And I thought that joining would really put me out there and kind of like force me to engage with the residents. And like my my freshman year, I didn't even see like my RA ever. Like the only time I saw her was probably once. And so I wanted to change that for the residents this year and be more engaged with them and actually build relationships with the residents. Thank you. Um, so what do you guys think about the actual residence halls, um, like the dorms where you live? Um, well, Franta being open for only a year now, um, it's just a complete new breath of, of fresh air because um, every other dorm building, um, or as we call it, is on res live, every other residence hall um, is apartment style. And Franta is the first uh, residence hall that we've had that uh, is single and double dorm style. So um, you can either have one roommate or be in a room by yourself. Um, and um, you know the opportunity to have the student lounge or the study rooms um, within your own res hall uh, is a big plus because um, you know if you don't want to have to walk across campus, yes, campus is very small, um, but if you don't want to walk across campus, you can go you know ten feet down from your hallway and you have a study room where it's quiet and you can go in there with like a group of your friends and, and all study together. Uh, and even in the lounges, uh, there's a TV and a bunch of um, seating to hang out and um, it's definitely being brand new and, and um, you know a difference from the apartments it's it's uh, you know I I've, I've wanted to um, you know live there myself although I do like an apartment that I live in right now um, you know the the apartments currently um, so Leach, Abel, Miller, and Jackson um, they're all um, older buildings uh, but there, there are plans to, um, or not plans, there are um, people to keep them up to date and keep them up to code in order for there to be a healthy environment to live in. Um, and any problems we have um, in the residence halls, we have maintenance on standby uh, Monday through Fridays. Um, and the residence halls, you know, especially uh, Leach and Abel and, well, actually not all of them, they all have a different like feel to them and you're able to, um, you know, if you're living in front of your first year and then you start to make friends your freshman year, you can get a, enough people together and get your own apartment um, in one of the rest halls. So that's definitely a big plus. So I'm an RA in Franta. I'm a, and there are two on my floor and two on Gabby's floor as well, but she'll touch on that from her personal experience. But seeing everybody like coming back like what anthony was talking about earlier like everybody being able to be in the same place already enough is like crazy because last year when front was open for the first year it wasn't able to be used at its full capacity or full usage because obviously covid was happening so we didn't want to risk any help so seeing that be open and usable and seeing kids go down to the study lounge and then seeing them in the elevator oh i'm just gonna hop on over to this res hall real quick because i have friends over there you know it's seeing that community grow from having so many people in one space that can relate to each other you know it's their first year on campus you know it's their first year in college so having all those people so close as well is making it a lot easier to encourage communication Um, as Laura said, I live in Franta. Um, I like it because the paint is fresh and it's new and everything. Um, I personally don't like like the, just the room kind of thing and you have to like walk out to go to your bathroom. I personally prefer the apartment style, but that's because I also like to cook. Um, I have lived in all four of 
the holes and my favorite would have to be Jackson or Miller because they're the same and that's because of the balcony but otherwise all of them have like as Anthony said a different feel and I feel like you have to live in everyone to kind of choose which one you prefer for yourself. Um, how is the food? So um, I mentioned how we have a, a brand new dining hall. Um, I, know, I know you like to cook, but um, if you can kind of talk about the food. Um, well, for for this being like the first you know dining hall like experience that Goldie has had, it's um, you know it, it's good enough. It's good enough. Um, it's definitely it's definitely very helpful for when um, you know if you're you're running late for class but you just want to stop by for you know a quick snack or whatever they have um, attached to the dining hall they also have like a market which is similar to like a Wawa um, and they have kiosks where you can just order your food and then go pay uh, at the register uh, you know and they're both um, great because and I think the market just started adding like um, some other you know stuff that you could use for your room, such as like soap or laundry or um, other things like little items that you may need for, you know, your day to day uh, living basis. Um, but for, for the food in the dining hall, and especially because they're like completely like open now, they have, um, they're making use of like each side of like the, there's like a counter space um, and they have like this, their salad bar, they have, um, the first station is like entrees, two different entrees and like some sides. Middle station is usually like pastas and pizzas. Um, and then the third station is, a, is you can make your own sandwich. Um, and then they have like, uh, like a, a, a drink machine where you can, um, you know, get soda or water or any other flavored drinks. They have coffee, desserts. It's They have, a, they have a, enough to keep you fed and um, you can actually go through the um, student affairs office to um, either increase your your weekly meal count or to decrease it if you would like um, because the week um, there are the meals meal swipes work week by week and um, they'll reset I believe every Saturday or every Sunday um, but they, they have enough food to keep everyone fed and they'll usually always have leftovers um, so there's nothing to worry about for when you know if you don't have food and, and you're living in an apartment um, you know stop by the dining hall and so you got meal swipes you also get flex dollars within your meal plans which um, you know when you get to campus that'll be further explained so like anthony said it, it's like it's good you know it's good enough you know so it's it's enough needed to keep yourself sustained you know you'll never run out of food they always have a lot of options they're like three counters sometimes a third one's open and that's like anthony was saying like make your own sandwich and stuff and the second one it's like all pizza from the pizza oven that we have or pasta with different sauces or something like that and then the first one would be like cheeseburgers french fries we have chicken like all this kind of stuff and they have a nice salad bar that you can either get like salad or a bunch of fruits and they also have the drinks just like anthony just touched on but we also have during the week we have like three separate times to get meals like we have a breakfast a lunch and a dinner and all three have different options for food as well so if you find yourself like oh i like the breakfast foods a lot better than the lunch foods they have the breakfast time i believe it opens from 6 30 to 8 30 where you can grab breakfast if you don't feel like lunch is going to be the way for you or you don't feel like dinner is going to be the way for you or something like that um and on the weekends they have brunch and kind of just mold the breakfast and lunch together because nobody's waking up that early on a weekend so yeah they have a lot of options in the lightning cafe as well like Anthony was talking about serving stuff like deodorant uh medicine toothbrushes all that kind of stuff over there as well as coffee and pre-made sandwiches and all that kind of stuff is just really helpful um I guess food is food as long as you're fed at the end of the day it doesn't really matter how it tastes um, but I personally like the Starbucks that they have in the Lightning Market. I like the frappuccinos there. Thank you. Um, is there a lot of school spirit? Do a lot of students attend um, the sports events? Um, well, with, um, you know, 
the the change from COVID and and all the restrictions and you know the the vaccine mandate. They've been able to um, kind of open that up a little bit more. Um, when I, when it was my freshman year and, and like halfway of my sophomore year uh, before we shut down, um, attendance for games from like especially um, residential students uh, was pretty high because uh, everybody knew everybody. It's only like an everybody knew everybody kind of basis. Um, you, kind of, you saw the same faces on the same routine every day, going to the same classes um, on your on your different days. Uh, you kind of saw. Um, you know, you were either a part of a group or you went just to go support and um, you know, everybody, there's just a bunch of different crowds there and we all kind of had the same vibe, the same energy um, there to just uh, support our friends and support our school and represent ourselves. Um, you know, our, I would say our more popular games are probably our basketball um, and soccer games that we have. Um, uh, you know, the, the soccer field we have at, uh, on campus um, when the soccer games, uh, because there's no lights, usually all the soccer games are during the day, um, which, you know, some people can't make it because of class. There's still plenty of people that come out to them. And uh, it's definitely nice to have all the uh, campus life kind of building up again and seeing everybody at these sports events. Yeah, coming from like a personal angle, like we have a lot of RAs that are in sports as well. And just coming from that, kind of perspective like we all try to go to games as much as possible for them so that we can support them and build them up so that's just coming from a small group of like 14 people and we know multiple people in it so if you're in like your best friends on the softball team or something like that like you're encouraged to go but it's also it's like hey it's right there like why don't you just go so it's like more like why not than an obligation so I found that really really cool Another thing you have to take into consideration is the size of the school. It's um, it's not a big school, so don't expect like the the gym to be completely full because that's probably everyone that lives on campus. But uh, definitely, like what Anthony said, now that COVID is kind of dying down, a lot of people are coming out and supporting, which is nice to see. Um, is there an opportunity to play sports if I'm not recruited on a team? As far as I'm aware, um, I'm sure, you know, if you get connected with someone within the athletic department like Jeremy, um, you know, if there's if there's a desire to play, you know, there's definitely, you can reach out to those um, resources to, uh, you know, get, get yourself an opportunity to come out for a team. I know that cross country and track, like that coach is always pushing for uh, anybody that's interested, just come out, email something, and, and you'll, you'll, they'll find a way for you to get involved. I also believe that on the GBC athletics page, they have like under each sport, they have like a way to kind of send in an application almost to be like, Hey, this is what I've done before. You know, if, if that's a lot easier, if you don't like a lot of confrontation, it's just kind of like sliding the paperwork. So that just might be a little easier. So somebody asked a question in the chat, and if you guys don't know the answer, I can answer it, but um, they asked, why is legal studies in the English major? Do you want me to answer? <laughs> so legal studies is a concentration. So in, it's English is the major and legal studies is the concentration. So we have three different concentrations within our English major. So it, when you, if you're interested in English, in majoring in English, you can choose one of the different concentrations. Um, how easy is it to get jobs or internships? Um, we have great resources with, uh, the two career service uh, ladies, Beth Kirker and Carol Riley, they have um, an enormous amount of connections and, and they are always trying to uh, you know, do something different or do something more with um, you know, the career fair that we have uh, once a semester, um, uh, whether virtual or in person, this is, um, those two have um, the ability to get you connected with, with anybody. Um, and even like with, uh, in the, in departments throughout campus, like, um, Laura had mentioned that she was uh, an intern for admissions. 
Um, and, you know, being a part of the uh, at different offices, I know there's an RA that works um, for the career service office as well. Um, you know, just getting connected with them and, and introducing yourself and getting acquainted to know, um, you know, what they have to offer for you as well as, um, you know, narrowing down what you may like, what you may not like, uh, and really setting your, yourself up with um, getting yourself a resume that looks professional. Um, they have different mock interviews, sessions that you can go in with an actual employer that comes in and uh, asks questions. Um, I, I would just really recommend that um, getting connected with Karen or, or Beth uh, will definitely make that um, possibility greater um, to get an internship or a job. So I have a pretty personal one for this one. So my internship that I had had previously fell apart due to when COVID was really starting. So in a last ditch effort, I got in contact with career services and I was like, do you have anything open on campus? Like I can do anything. And they helped me with my resume to build it while I was there, which wasn't even what I asked for, but I mean, they were so willing to help. And then I started in international admissions and wherever they needed help, you know, like the advising office, financial aid, registrar, the um, academic affairs office, like and helping with tours and doing all this kind of stuff. And they were really so awesome with helping with that. And the biggest tip I would say, like Anthony said, it was like, just go to the career fairs because there are a lot of companies that go out there like Wispis, uh, I think another one was a uh, chase bank as well like big companies that we know you know like they're going to be there and it's the perfect time to network with people like that even if you don't want a job at the moment yeah both of the ladies are really good um as long as you go introduce yourself and show that you're interested in finding something whenever something comes up on the end um like even if you see them in passing, they'll be like, hey, Gabby, I found something you might be interested in. So just make that relationship and connection with them and they're super helpful with that. Um, so my last question is, what is your favorite thing about Goldie Beacom College? Um, if I could, I mean, my favorite thing that I can also use to like, if I had one word to describe Goldie is just family. Um, the, the act of me getting involved and like wanting to just do something at the school and not just go to my classes and uh, you know, spend time with friends. I wanted to set myself up for success for my career in the future. Um, you know, just being a part of a family, whether that's a part of um, you know, the team that I'm on, like the Res Life team, um, but also just the ability to see any face of whether it's a faculty member or just any student that I see and saying hello or just smiling like everyone is friendly here and everybody wants to see you succeed. Um, very rarely will you see or walk around campus and um, you know a faculty member just doesn't have a smile on their face like they um, as much as their job is stressful they still you know love their they still love being on campus and still love see seeing all the students that, that walk around, especially with everyone coming back. Um, you know, family is just the biggest thing here. And um, being from a big family myself, I'm one of six kids. I am a big family guy. So um, coming to a small school and being able to connect with um, so many important people and creating relationships with so many important people, um, you know, they've kind of brought me in and I just feel like another member of the family here. So I would definitely say the community, it's kind of like a parallel thing with what Anthony was saying. Uh, but everyone has like their own little bubble of friends, like even if we don't want to admit it, but the communities here, it's like, sure, we're all RAs. And like we had a couple of weeks beforehand to really get to know each other and trust each other. But then our community as an RA branches off because someone's on the softball team. And then the softball team is a community with us. You know, it's like, it never ends. You're never not feeling like you belong somewhere. Uh, it's always, hey, I can walk around this part of campus or walk around campus in general. And I know like five people. It depends on how much you put yourself out there, of course, but there'll still be nobody that will be outright rude or ignore you. They'll always be willing to help you. If you're like, which one's Miller, which one's Jackson? They both look the same, you know, like they'll, they'll be able to help you out. So it's really the community for me. 
Um, my favorite thing now was actually initially my least favorite thing when I came here, and that's the size. When I first came here, I was like, oh my God, it's small. It's just like Malawi. And then now I love it because it literally reminds me of home where everyone knows everyone. And now I kind of made it my home, away from home. Thank you. And then uh, Karen, did you have some questions? Um, I did have a question. I wondered, um, thank you all. Oh my gosh, these, these were such helpful. <laughs> it's such helpful information for people to hear coming from students' perspective. So thank you so much for sharing what you've shared. Um, my question is two parts. One, what was your biggest adjustment coming to college? And B, what would be your piece of advice for seniors right now who are just getting ready? Well, many of them are just getting ready to start applications and you know, some may be into it already, but I know a lot of kids are just getting ready to start. So your biggest adjustment and advice for current seniors. Um, I would say my biggest adjustment was um, just kind of sitting there as soon as my parents had left from dropping me off from my first day of moving um, and realizing kind of sitting in my room like, oh man, like I got to sit there and, and do this thing on my own. Um, you know, because I obviously had met my roommates and, and they were like, we became best friends right away. Um, but when it came to schoolwork, like the only person that was um, stopping me from being successful was myself. So kind of maturing and realizing, you know, I did, I got to get my work done and I got to, um, you know, there, there's no time to be lackadaisical at all. Um, you know, college is the real deal. And even though um, some classes may be easier, easier than others, there's no, um, there's no room to lack because, um, you know, if you have that work ethic and that drive to uh, want to be the best version of yourself, um, my, my realization and my adjustment was just, I got to you know, stay on top of myself and stay on top of my work. So I would definitely say that my biggest adjustment was time management. Uh, in high school, I played a sport. I was in eight classes. They all ran back to back. I would see those same classes the next day, you know, like all this kind of stuff. It was so compact and so methodical that when coming here and I'm like, wow, I only have two classes today because like I only have to take four in this session, you know, like that's weird. You feel like you have a lot of time, but then of course you don't want to do work. So it, it gets a little difficult to really plan yourself out because instead of being forced in the time crunch, like, damn, this is due tomorrow. You know, like you, you have all this time and it's really what to do with it. You know, you might have some classes that say, oh, this assignment's due at the end of, end of the semester. So just keep that on your radar. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll get that done. You know, whatever gets to the night before and your 20 page paper is due. So it's really just keeping yourself organized along with your schedule and all that kind of stuff. And my biggest piece of advice would probably be to go easy on yourself. Um, college is hard, you know, it's, you think you're gonna fail all the time. You think you aren't gonna make any friends because it's a new place, you know? So it's really just to go easy on yourself and give yourself some time to adjust. Because if you try and go in there and it's like, oh yeah, this is 13th grade. No, it's not, it's, it's different. So you gotta give yourself a minute and take a deep breath. Um, my biggest adjustment was also um, the time and also just I was so dependent on my family to do basically everything and then I came out here and I was like I have to go buy my own bed sheets I have to buy my own groceries all that kind of stuff so just being independent um, you have a lot of freedom but you need to use that wisely as well as the time as well you have so much free time um, even though you think that you have like a lot of classes, you're still gonna have a lot of free time. So just how you use your time. And my biggest advice is just to take care of yourself mentally and physically, because once you kind of fall into like a state of depression, it's so hard to get out of. So just as soon as you see yourself kind of falling in that trap, rely on your friends, rely on the resources, um, we actually have a counselor on campus now. She just started this semester. So she's a great resource to use as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. Before we wrap up, um, Brittany, do you want to say anything about the question about can counselors send transcripts and SAT scores? And I know there was a question about stats to get in, and I don't think we need to ask the students for their particular information, but if you just want to comment on anything about grades generally. Sure. So um, there is a scholarship grade that I went over in the um, presentation that shows you if um, if you're on that grid, you would definitely be eligible for one of our merit scholarships. Um, we usually you have to have a 2.0 or above for a high school GPA. Um, we don't have a minimum um, SAT or ACT score as we are test optional. And yes, your counselors can submit your transcripts. Um, we can, you can send them through email, through mail, they can be sent through parchment, whatever is easiest for um, you and your counselor. So we're going to wrap up because we're at the end of our time. Um, I want to thank Brittany so much for representing Goldie Beacom and Anthony and Laura and Gabby. You guys were fantastic. Thanks for sharing your experiences with our Delaware High School students and their families. Um, super, super helpful. So good luck to you in your um, semesters. And um, thank you all for joining us. And the recording will be posted um, in a couple of days on the DelawareStudentSuccess.org website. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.